Hi, I'm Joe Gertis, and this is Coffee in the Capital. Our guest today is Pennsylvania Secretary of Agriculture, Russell Redding. Secretary Redding is the 26th Secretary of Agriculture and was formerly the Dean of the School of Agriculture at Delaware Valley University. Mr. Secretary, thank you for taking the time to join us again. It's a pleasure uh, to be back. It was good to be with you uh, several weeks ago uh, at the reconvening of the PSATS Annual Conference. Great to to feel the energy. Uh, you know, as I always say, I mean, I see people uh, at the PSAS conference that uh, I don't see anywhere else, right? I mean, they're, right. they're there as, as uh, you know, your members and learning and thinking of what's, what's necessary to do their jobs as township supervisors, but they're so critically important to what we do uh, in agriculture, right? Land use in Pennsylvania sure. is a local discussion. Things we'll talk about today and intersect with you, but really nice to be back and feel the energy in that room. So thank you, partnership. We're starting to hear on the nightly news about the avian influenza. And, uh, you know, Pennsylvanians are weary um, and wondering if they should be concerned about this. And, and just wanted to see if you could take a moment to explain to our membership uh, what exactly is going on with this avian influenza and should they be concerned? Uh, so to answer your question, we all should be concerned. Why? Uh, because of several things. You know, we are a poultry uh, dense state. That's right. Uh, That's right. You know, fourth in the country, $7.1 billion worth of, you know, investment in economic activity, thousands of jobs. Uh, we all know uh, where that's concentrated. It's in, you know, South Central and Eastern Pennsylvania, by and large, uh, you know, over 7,000 uh, commercial poultry flocks in the state. But a lot of those are in the uh, southern part of of Pennsylvania, and that is a concern. Uh, secondly, is about food supply. Uh, I think it's also a piece that we have learned off of COVID, yes, is how is. fragile that system is, and this uh, virus uh, you know, hits us at a time when there are already significant cracks in supply chains, right? And wars occurring, and things are contributing to uh, concern about food and food security. So that is our worry, and anytime you have a virus in circulation, crazy things can happen. Uh, as we have witnessed the last couple of years, uh, things happen. And you know, uh, people get uh, anxious about it, workers get anxious about it. And that threat continues today. And we expect it'll be for some extended period of time. This will be in circulation for quite a while. Mr. Secretary, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the uh, the farm bill, the historic farm bill that was passed several years ago had a, had a piece of it that actually uh, uh, allowed for the department to have a rapid response to these types of, of incidents. Did that help uh, the department uh, be able to respond in a quick and, 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 and timely manner? I'm impressed with your memory. Uh, you know, we, um, you know, we're intentional about all of the components of Farm Bill uh, to include this rapid response component for the reason you state. I mean, I think sure. we're always you know, a day away from a disaster, right? right? It, it could be droughts, it could be the African swine fever, it could be high path AI, it's spotted lanternfly. You know, it, there's a long list of those kinds of threats to Pennsylvania generally and Pennsylvania agriculture specifically. Mm -hmm. So that line item allowed us to you know, make uh, some early investments and build some capacity here at the department. Uh, and by extension with our partners at Penn State University and the University of Pennsylvania Vet School. Mr. Secretary, I'm sure our members are wondering, what can they do to help in this uh, in this fight? And, and what should they be on the lookout for? Yeah, uh, members, your members are in, in a really critical spot. I mean, at the end of the day, awareness of high path AI uh, is part of our response, right? right? So you think about the very first positive high path AI case in Pennsylvania was a bald eagle in Chester County, mm -hmm. followed by wild ducks in Venango and then some geese in Franklin and Mercer, uh, and then commercial flocks in Lancaster and Berks. So my point is that it's avian based, not commercially you know, based. Uh, so making sure that we're all aware of our surroundings. Uh, there is a full partnership with the Pennsylvania Game Commission uh, and the USDA, so making sure that your members, as they travel the roads, they're out there all the day, they're actually a, in a great spot to give us statewide surveillance 
uh, on high path AI. So them seeing dead birds uh, of any type, I think making sure that they report that. Number two, being sensitive to uh, the biosecurity. It's one of the sure. lessons we have learned uh, everybody uh, who's been impacted by high path AI, biosecurity is really critical at the farm level, at the feed mill, at the service supply, at the township level. Being aware of where we're going, uh, don't go on these farms. My general point is don't go to these poultry farms unless you're invited to be there or you give a call to the person who owns them uh, to say, hey, are you okay with or what I what should I avoid? I think that's a really important awareness piece as well, the biosecurity generally. A lot of things that your members, uh, just from an awareness, biosecurity, and then help where needed as we get into, into uh, cleaning up uh, and reestablishing these businesses. Sure. Mr. Secretary, as you know, we've talked, uh, you know, the, the, the COVID pandemic has kind of highlighted some of our supply chain issues. And uh, I don't think you can you can drive anywhere across Pennsylvania without seeing help wanted signs uh, hung on almost every business in the Commonwealth. There's a, a great shortage of workers right now that are out there to uh, to do this. And I just wanted to see uh, your thoughts on on where the status of the agriculture industry is in Pennsylvania with with the farm workers that are so vital. I'll just answer it by saying we're short on the temporary labor and we're struggling with the full-time year-round labor of finding people to work in agriculture. Finally, Mr. Secretary, farmers and township, uh, townships uh, face increasingly uh, costly mandates from the federal and state government uh, to ensure the impact on our water supply uh, and the Chesapeake watershed is curtailed. Uh, there's no better stewards uh, of the environment than, than our townships, uh, our township officials and our farmers. Uh, what are your thoughts on the on the partnership that, that, that we need to continue to, to help make sure we meet these goals that are set? Yeah, and thank you for the uh, for the question, but also the partnership. You know, we've talked about this many times over yes. the last, you know, I don't know, 40 years. And I, I say that because PSATS was also an advocate for us uh, many years ago when Pennsylvania took the very first step to have the nutrient management law passed in 1993. Uh, and I, I point to that because it stands in contrast to some of our neighboring states who like to point out the progress we're making or lack thereof and forget that you know we have a local government state both townships and counties which means our legislature is responsive to that um, and we've got a really tall order when you're talking about the largest water body in the Chesapeake Bay watershed coming through and cutting through you know the, the you know uh, 41 counties of Pennsylvania's agriculture right it's a yep. big deal uh, so we have taken that serious. I appreciate the partnership with PSATs and farmers. So I appreciate it, uh, you know, PSATs being at the table for the watershed implementation plan, being an advocate for our appropriations for both the nutrient management program in Chesapeake Bay, for conservation in our farm bill, for the nation leading farmland preservation program. I say that all as background to, to also point out that we have more work to do, right, to meet the goals. but. Yes. I will always be optimistic. Well, that's all the time we have today. Mr. Secretary, thank you for taking the time again to join us. And remember, if you like what you're seeing, subscribe to PSAT's YouTube channel and follow our social media pages for more Township Video News content. Next Tuesday, look for your next episode of TVN.